Hi everyone, I'm Bruce DePoit. Today here on News Talk, will Virginia be a battleground this fall? The Commonwealth usually votes Republican in presidential elections, but this year Barack Obama may give John McCain a run for his money. We'll talk about this with Patrick Ottenhoff of New Media Strategies. Also today, a new exhibit at the museum focuses on reporting on the FBI. It's called G-Men and Journalists. From News Channel 8, this is News Talk. Here's your host, Bruce DePoit. We've got a great show lined up for you today. It's great to have you along. In a typical presidential election, the Washington area gets little love from the candidates. Sure, many of them live here, but when it comes to campaigning, town hall meetings and rallies and the rest of it, we get little of the action. That's because Maryland and D.C. are reliably Democratic enclaves. Virginia usually votes Republican. That could change, though, this year. The Old Dominion is popping up on many analysts' lists of states that are in play this time. Patrick Ottenhoff joins us now. He's an online strategist for New Media Strategies in Arlington, where he writes for the electoralmap.com. It's good to see you. Thanks very much for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me, Bruce. How in play could Virginia be this time? Um, well, Virginia is certainly going to be a competitive state, and um, it's definitely been purpling more in recent elections. But as you mentioned, those pundits have put it on their uh, sort of their list of states to watch. And some pundits have even gone so far as to name it a toss-up state, as one uh, Washington Post reporter put it the other day. But I think if you've been listening to the conventional wisdom so far this election, if you've been putting your money on the CW, you're right. probably not winning many bets. Right, so, because um, uh, you think back to Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire back to New and Hampshire all the others, right? How's Barack Obama and John McCain the, the nominees? Um, the conventional wisdom never had them. So I think that Virgin Virginia will be a competitive state, um, but John McCain has a clear advantage. So, so you talk about the purpling, uh, the com being the blending of red and blue, uh, the way we always talk about the states. Um, if this is anything of a battleground, a competitive environment, mm -hmm. where we see lots of the candidates between now and November, this would represent a fairly sharp departure from the past. Sure. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you have to go back many decades to find a time when the winner right. didn't have an R next um, to his name. Actually, four decades. The last Democratic president the uh, last Democratic candidate to win Virginia was LBJ in 1964. Um, so it's been a long time. Uh, Bill Clinton got closer in 1996, but by 2004, George W. Bush walked with a uh, eight-point victory, which was more, which is a higher margin than he walked, um, than he won, than he lost New Jersey, which was mm -hmm. seven points. So this red, this, I mean, so this idea that it's purpling. Um, you, you look back at the last three big statewide elections, and it's it's a it's a real marvel. Uh, uh, Mark Warner uh, mm -hmm. beating Mark Early, yep. uh, uh, Tim Kaine winning over Jerry Kilgore, and of course uh, uh, Jim Webb aided in no small uh, not the squeaker. Uh, yeah, and aided not a little bit by his opponent's sure. own missteps, knocking off an incumbent United States senator. Uh, granted, they did it with moderates. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to win Virginia with a liberal. That could be. Uh, if this becomes a battleground state, does Barack Obama have to prove he's a moderate like those others we just named? I, I, absolutely. He really has to. Um, but the interesting thing, thing about those three candidates that you named is they really had three distinct advantages that helped them win. Um, when, when Mark Warner won in 2001, mm -hmm. he went into southwest Virginia mm -hmm. and won uh, rural southwestern uh, voters. Uh, Obama's just been get, getting swamped in southwest uh, in Appalachia by Hillary Clinton in the primary. So that's going to be a big challenge for him. Um, Obama's not going to do as well with military voters that Jim Webb did, that, that mm -hmm. he did in 2006, um, especially since he's running against a candidate who's a former POW and is a the son and, a, and the grandson of a, of a U.S. Navy admiral. But uh, getting back to moderates, Tim Kaine won in 2005 by winning many moderates in suburban Virginia, around the Washington area, and in Richmond. Um, but the thing is, Tim Kaine ran against Jerry Kilgore, a guy from southwest Virginia, who ran ads in Fairfax County that said right. Tim Kaine doesn't believe in the death penalty, he wouldn't even execute Hitler. Um, that was an ad that just, and that was a mess message that just didn't fly in Fairfax County. Um, just wasn't palatable to moderate Republicans. Um, but John McCain is. And let's, let's go with that a minute. Let's talk sure. about John McCain because in those three statewide races where Democrats won, mm -hmm. they got some help because their, the, the GOP candidates w either stumbled and fumbled and bumbled, or they were boring. Uh, Jerry Kilgore didn't seem to have a lot to say, and what he had to say, he didn't articulate particularly well. Makaka, mm -hmm. you know, George Allen's famous quip, sure. is, is going to be in the political 
manuals and history books as the thing not to say and the right. and the and the you know the sort of how not to comport yourself uh, textbook how to lose an election when you got it sewn up right I mean Say the guy is thinking about running for president and right. who knows how far he would have gotten I, this time I, right I'd say he'd probably be the, the candidate right now he I think he would have I, certainly been in the top tier and then going all the way back to Mark Early Mark mm -hmm. Warner's opponent he was kind of vanilla and just a, a big kind of a blah. Mm -hmm. John McCain is none of those things. Dynamic, war hero, uh, with some legitimate appeal to moderates. So this is very mm -hmm. different. A absolutely. Um, you mentioned war, uh, he's a war hero. If you look at Virginia, we've got many veterans, mil many active military personnel in Virginia. Hampton Roads alone is the uh, home to our, our, our Navy, or um, I'm sorry, our Atlantic Fleet. Mm -hmm. It's the NATO Command Center and is home to hundreds of thousands of military personnel. Um, so we could see an unprecedented turnout in Hampton Roads. Um, Northern Virginia, obviously home to the Pentagon, Quantico, and Fort Belvoir. So that's a huge factor. Um, and if you want to talk about moderate Republicans, if you look at Bush v. McCain in 2000 in the primary, Bush beat McCain in every county west of I-95 and south of I-66. Wow. And McCain only won in Tom Davis's area, which is obviously very moderate. Phone lines open if you have a question or comment. We're looking at will Virginia be a battleground this time? And, you know, this race is shaping up as a much more interesting race than the last two because the last two, it seemed as though the candidates went only to a handful of states. Now we're talking about a third of the country, a quarter of the country that may, may get in on some of the action, as it were. So Absolutely. shaping up is a much different, frankly, much more interesting race. We'd like to know what you think about this. Phone lines open at 703-387-1020. Again, afternoon viewers, love to have you jump in with a question or comment and join us. The number here is 703-387-1020. We'll go to the phones as they come in. We'll know f what the thinking of the campaigns is by whether or not they spend precious time right. here. That's the litmus test, Ex right? Exactly, because Obama's going to have no shortage of money. So we're going to see ads here in Virginia. We're going to see the candidate. He's going to be traveling. However, you, could, you only have so much time. Um, and how much time will he spend in Virginia? One interesting factor is the first stop that he made after his St. Paul victory speech was in southwest Virginia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he knows it's a weak spot. He knows he needs to campaign in Virginia. So I, I think we'll... Well, we'll see if he's back here. But we we'll have, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. We have a couple of visuals I want to put them on the screen. Sure. We'll talk about them because the first one illustrates, okay, if Virginia becomes a battleground, where are the votes? Where mm -hmm. is the focus and the attention likely to be? And you've su supplied us with these uh, graphics. Uh, the, the one at the bottom looks vaguely obscene. We're going <laughs> to ask people to look past that aspect of it. Um, top, t the top map is... Uh, Virginia by county, right? right and then exactly. and the, lo the, the funny looking one at the bottom is what? Uh, it's, it's called a cartogram and I got this map from a delegate, Bob, Bob Riggs, who represents uh, Arlington County. Um, what we see here, this is the 2005 governor's race, is, is that um, the counties on the bottom are uh, th they're weighted by how many voters are in, in each county. Exactly, right. So while you look at a map of Virginia and it might be a big, you know, a red state, right. what we see is that Arlington down to Richmond, down to the seven cities, what we call the uh, the Crescent, um, actually has a lot of sway in Virginia. And this is a winning formula right here for Tim Kaine. So this is where the people are, and the people last time went for, when they, they went and blue, exactly. they went Democratic, and they went for Kaine, and you can win all the small counties, the, the, low, the low populated counties you want, it doesn't add up to an election.